Welcome to Informatica Cloud 101 On Demand course. In this module, we will look at some Salesforce specific options available when creating the task. After completing this module, you would be able to set the Salesforce target batch size, use the Salesforce bulk API, use Salesforce outbound messaging to trigger a synchronization task in real time. The target batch size determines the maximum number of records to include in each query that writes to the Salesforce target. Salesforce allows up to 200 records for each query, so the default for standard API jobs is set to 200. If you enter a value higher than 200, only 200 rows are included in each query. You might use a smaller batch size for upsets because you cannot update the same row more than once in a single query. To process multiple upsets on a particular row in the same query, set the batch size to 1. Salesforce limits the number of queries you can make in a 24-hour period. For more information about the limit, refer to the Salesforce documentation. You can use the Salesforce bulk API to read data from Salesforce sources and write data to Salesforce targets. Use the bulk API to process large amounts of Salesforce data while generating a minimum number of API calls. With the Salesforce Bulk API, each batch of data can contain up to 10,000 rows or 1 million characters of data in CSV format. When the synchronization application creates a batch, it adds any required characters to properly format the data, such as adding quotation marks around text. You can monitor jobs that use the Bulk API in terms of writing to Salesforce targets. So if you do enable monitoring, the synchronization service will be able to create success and error files for your row level information. With monitoring enabled, the synchronization application requests the status of each batch from the Salesforce service. It repeats the request every 10 seconds until all batches are complete. Then it writes the responses from the Salesforce service to the activity monitor, activity log, and the session log. By default, the synchronization application does not monitor bulk API jobs. Note that it will require some additional web services calls if you do not want to monitor the bulk API jobs. So if you do turn on monitoring using the bulk API, the location for the error and success files that get generated is the same as the standard jobs, which we reviewed in an earlier module. However, the naming convention is slightly different. As you can see here, underscore bulk gets added to the file name, so you can easily differentiate between a bulk and standard job log file. When you use the bulk API to load data to Salesforce, you can configure the task to perform a parallel or serial load. By default, it performs a parallel load. In a parallel load, Salesforce writes batches to targets at the same time. In a serial load, Salesforce writes batches to targets in the order it receives them. It processes the entire contents of each batch before proceeding to the next batch. Parallel load will actually run faster, so you should use that if you are not concerned about the target load order. However, if you want to preserve the target load order, then you should turn on serial load. I will now show you where you can change the Salesforce target batch size for standard API jobs, where you can enable bulk API along with bulk API monitoring options. In this demo, I will show you where to change the Salesforce target batch size for standard API jobs, and from where to enable the bulk API and bulk API monitoring options. Log in to the Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services and select the Data Integration Service. From the Navigation pane, click Explore. Select the default folder. From the list of available assets, select the synchronization task where the target is Salesforce and click Edit. From the Edit task window, go to the Schedule step. Scroll down to view the Advanced Salesforce Options section. From the Salesforce API dropdown, we can select Bulk API or Standard API. If the Standard API is selected, we can change the target batch size and enable the success files. If the bulk API is selected, 
we can monitor the bulk job and create the success files. To enable the serial mode for bulk API jobs, check the Enable Serial Mode checkbox. This concludes the demo. The next topic in this module is on doing a more event-driven or real-time triggering of a task. This is using a feature in Salesforce called Outbound Messaging. This is available for synchronization and mapping task only. Basically, what it does is it gives you the option to run a task in Informatica Cloud based on receiving an outbound message from Salesforce. You can use this option when the task includes a single Salesforce object and does not include row limits or data filters. So what Informatica Cloud will do when you tell it that you are going to run a task based on an outbound message, it will generate what's called an endpoint URL. You will then take the endpoint URL, copy it and paste it into Salesforce in an outbound message, which will trigger the task in Informatica Cloud. So here's a quick overview of outbound messaging using a Salesforce diagram. Basically, what Salesforce outbound messaging allows you to do is specify that changes to fields within Salesforce will cause messages to be sent to designated external servers. What is interesting about this feature is that not only does it send the message, but within the message it includes all the details about the record that was changed. So basically what Salesforce does it, it sends a SOAP message and says, hey, I want you to run this task. And here are all the field details. So that essentially becomes the input to your synchronization task. So if you want to use this feature, it's a multi-step process to get it set up. The first step is to create a synchronization or mapping task in Informatica Cloud. Again, keeping in mind that it must have a single Salesforce object and cannot include any row limits or data filters. The second step would be to create the outbound message is Salesforce. Then the final step is configuring a workflow rule or some other trigger in Salesforce to actually send the outbound message. I will now demonstrate the steps to use Salesforce outbound messaging to trigger a synchronization task. In this demo, I will demonstrate the steps to use Salesforce outbound messaging to trigger a synchronization task. Log into the Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services and select the Data Integration Service. Click New from the navigation pane. Now I'm going to set up a new synchronization task that uses Salesforce outbound messaging. Select Synchronization Task and click Create. Enter the task name and select Insert from the Task Operation drop-down. Click Next. From the Source Connection drop-down, select the Salesforce connection. And select the Account object from the Source Object drop-down. Click Next. Select the SQL Server connection from the Connection drop-down. From the Target Object drop-down, select Outbound Accounts. Go to the Field Mapping step. Map the fields as shown. To validate the field mapping, click the Validate Mapping button. Click Next to go to the Schedule step of the wizard. To enable the outbound messaging for Salesforce, under the Schedule Details section, select the option to run this task in real time upon receiving an outbound message from Salesforce option. After you select this option, an endpoint URL is generated. Copy this endpoint URL. You can modify the timeout options as well. Click Finish to save and close the task. Now log into your Salesforce org. Go to the Setup page. On the Setup page, under Build section, go to Create, Workflows, and Approvals. Select the Outbound Messages option. To create a new outbound message, click the New Outbound Message button. Select Account from the Object drop-down. And click Next. In the Name field, enter Insert Account. Paste the Endpoint URL. 
and specify the user to send as option. Select the Accounts field to send across. For this demo, I will select all the fields and save the outbound message. Go back to the list of outbound messages. Now create a workflow rule to invoke that outbound message. Click the New Rule button. Specify the object as account and click Next. Enter the rule name as Insert Account. Set the evaluation criteria. For the purpose of this demo, I want the account data to be loaded to MySQL server each time an account is created in Salesforce. So I will select Created. From the Rule criteria, select Formula Evaluates to True. Since I want to trigger every time a new account record is created in Salesforce, so set it to 1 equals 1. It will always evaluate to True. Click Check Syntax to check for any errors. Now click Save and Next. From the Add Workflow Action drop-down, click Select Existing Action. Search the outbound message and add it to the selected action. Click Save and click Done. For the workflow rule to work, it must be activated. Click the Activate button. To test the workflow rule and outbound messaging, create a couple of new accounts. Now go to the monitor service in IICS. We can see that the task has been triggered. This concludes the demo. In the first lab, you will create a synchronization task triggered by outbound message in Salesforce. This concludes Module 15. This module showed you how to set the Salesforce target batch size, use the Salesforce bulk API, use Salesforce outbound messaging to trigger a synchronization task in real time.